Welcome to GM Crypto, the digital crossroads where the latest in blockchain, NFTs, and Web3 innovation all here in one. I'm your co-host, Jared Dillinger, also known across the basketball courts as the Daredevil, but now I'm serving as the head of KOLs and influencer marketing for Gala, as well as a little BD. I'm also the head KOL for Philippines' largest centralized exchange here in the country, Coins PH. Woo woo! So as I'm shifted my focus to the blockchain space since 2021, I'm here and I get to share my journey along with your journey. But really, I'm just glad I get to be here with these two gentlemen who are far more knowledgeable in the blockchain space than myself. <laughs> Thanks so much. Hey, everyone. My name is Luis, and I have been working in the crypto industry um, for about 10 years now. And actually, as we're recording, this is March 2024. I actually got my first job in this industry in March of 2014. So back then, we didn't even call it the crypto industry yet, or the blockchain industry, or the Web3 industry. Those terms did not exist yet. Back then, we just called it the Bitcoin industry. And um, yeah, so I got to see things like the launching of Ethereum, for God's sake, and, and wow. stuff like that, right? So the, the stuff that we are currently building, all of these apps and products and platforms that you all know and love, we got to see kind of that in its infancy, like, you know, nine years ago or something like that. Um, why am I doing this with these fine gentlemen? Well, I genuinely believe that crypto is a really important uh, instrument, a really important tool that all Filipinos need to have access to. Um, that's why I am in my current job, which is I'm running the G Crypto Exchange for Gcash. Um, if you are a normal person uh, who has never tried crypto ever before, you, you can just look in your Gcash app right now inside the G Invest folder and you'll find the G Crypto app right there. So yeah, um, actually our other co-host is someone I actually have been working with in yep. the past. Um, Sedano, you should tell us about yourself. Yo, hey guys, what's up? Uh, my name is John Sedano and yeah, actually uh, I was, you know, I started uh, trolling your threads even before I knew you. <laughs> That's how I got to know Luis right. and yeah, we eventually worked together in, in YGG and currently I am the campaign director for Yield Guild Games uh, Pilipinas. And I'm currently working on esports and uh, uh, talents. And yeah, I mean, by heart, I'm a serial gamer. You know, I've been playing computer games since I could walk and turn on a computer, basically. Um, but in crypto, I started uh, actually thanks to one of my really good friends back in college who was a computer science major who wouldn't stop blabbering about Bitcoin. It's like, what are you talking about? I feel every, <laughs> every, every every time every time I see me just talks about how Bitcoin's going up and it's like mm. going to be the currency of the future. Um, but yeah, totally forgot about it. But until you know, I started working, heard about Coins PH. Then you could buy um, crypto. I started buying Ethereum in Seven Eleven, oh, and wow. sooner I mean sooner than later, um, crypto started moving into into gaming. And got into Axie Infinity and heard about YGG and the rest is history. So here we are. Uh, amazing. I mean, together on GM Crypto, we're diving deep. For those who don't know, we are in the heart of Southeast Asia. Philippines represent. And just like Luis was saying, this is not just a podcast, you guys. This is, this is a movement. It's a movement towards making sure that you guys are more informed and more and more connected for supplying yourself about yep. this digital future that we're really in the middle of right now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, like it's technically part of the narrative for this next cycle that, you know, Southeast Asia or like I'd say even the Philippines, you know, we're at the heart of Facts. global Web3 adoption. I mean, Luis, why would you say that is? Uh, I mean, honestly, some of it, like, it, it feels like just good fortune, you yep. know? Um, the Philippines has always needed stuff like alternative finance. You know, our economy yeah. is not wonderful. Um, however, we do have a reasonable English-speaking population, mm -hmm. and we've got a very young population. They're constantly looking for new opportunities. And, you know, back in 2021, the pandemic came along. Yeah. And you had all of these, like, 20-something kids who were stuck at home. They should have been joining the workforce. Yep. Right. And they were like, instead, I was like, holy crap, everything's locked down. I can't do anything. Yep. Uh, and then I guess this little game called Axie Infinity comes along Infinium. and they realize that, hey, I can actually learn and earn from playing this game. 
Except I'm earning this thing called a cryptocurrency. What is yeah. that, right? And then that's kind of how that whole thing kind of started for so many young Filipinos. I think that was like at, at its peak, it was like how many one and a half million Pinoy's yep. playing in Axie Infinity. Insane. Like Just they were insane numbers. Like these guys are like even me and my friends. Like slowly were you know they've 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 been onboarded without even knowing it. Yeah. Right? right. Like my friends who usually wouldn't care about anything I say that's related to crypto yeah. would start ignoring me just now suddenly knows how to use a wallet, sure. which isn't that easy, right? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even now, like we have games, you know, we have apps that, you know, require, you know, you know, like a bit of understanding of what really you're doing, but because of these, you know, play to earn games, mm -hmm. um, like Axie Infinity, now you're forced to like take out that uh, those cryptocurrencies that you earned in game. So now you have to learn it and all of a sudden welcome you're now in web3. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that's I mean you guys I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves at yeah. the moment. Let's back this up just a little bit for the viewers. How how did we start this this Good this question. channel to start off? Like what did we do? Why did we what happened? Uh, I think it started when you and I Jared we we hopped on the call. Yep. And then you know we just started talking about like at the YGG both, event, right? Yeah, yep. at the YGG event. And we just started about, you know, what both of us are doing. And you you, you shared that, you know, like what really your bigger picture goal is, right? It's, you know, having, you know, that, that show that basically educates people about cryptocurrencies, like for everyone else. And like in my head, like, yeah, I mean, I have the same question. Why don't we have, you know, a, a legitimate show that actually is credible, that people will look you know we'll, we'll we'll be anticipating every week mm -hmm. instead of i mean uh i love watching crypto videos on youtube but it's still different when you have something like it's not cnbc it's not too complicated yeah. you know with the technicals and the financials but it's something that you know it's easily digestible it's applicable you know it's it happens it's it's from our experiences in day-to-day -day life with crypto and yeah i'm like i told i told jared like jared we need another guy in this i yeah. know i know the perfect guy <laughs> to approach yeah, yeah. <laughs> i've yeah, been right. trolling his post since 2017. because you and i were also <laughs> working on a kind of a, a similar concept yes. uh last year yes. called yes, ygtv yes, yes, yes. and yep. it kind of the yeah. very similar goals right and i think that what's really interesting about um so there's so much crypto talk shows on YouTube. There's a lot, yeah. there's yeah, a lot. Sure. But none of them are specific to the Philippines yeah. or it's none of them are specific to Southeast Asia yeah. really. And I kind of think that there is something very unique about the crypto experience here in yeah. the Philippines or mm -hmm. here in Southeast Asia that it's hard to capture that when you're kind yeah. of, you know, you're you're talking about the stuff that's going on in the US yeah. or in other countries. It's it's just a different experience. Mm -hmm. So the stuff that are that matter to to, you know, uh, our our player base or our user basis here in the Philippines or in Southeast Asia, it's just slightly different. Yep. Um, and that's fine. That actually makes me feel good because it means the crypto world is expanding to the point that you can't just have one yeah. global show that talks about the entire Everything industry, yeah. right? You kind of have to have specialists in in particular regions. Mm -hmm. And that's that to me is, you know, yeah. you know, coming from like from 2014 when it was very, very difficult for us to fill a coffee shop with 30 people yeah. to listen to us talking about Bitcoin. Yeah. Now we're talking about stuff like, yeah. you know, we can actually do a show now yeah. and, and we expect that a lot of people will find it useful. Hopefully, hopefully people yeah. will find it useful. Right? I mean, like uh, everyone listening at home, right? Like we are the boots on the ground for, you know, this next wave of sure. uh, Web3 and blockchain and crypto adoption. So super exciting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait till we kind of unravel this as we get more and deeper, deeper into the show. Yep. Obviously, this is just our first show, so we want to tell you guys a little bit about ourselves. But rest assured, we're going to be getting as far yep. and as deep into the crypto space as, as you guys will Hell get yeah. to enjoy. Yeah, I mean, I think we get 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 started. We actually sure? prepared, you know, a few of our, you know, like what we think are the most interesting, you know, news or trends, uh, maybe in the past week. So yeah, we'd we'll like to kick it off, Jared, Luis. Yeah. Okay, um, well, I'll do mine because awesome. I guess I'll do mine first because it's slightly not great news. So I think, <laughs> I think maybe your news is a little bit more positive so we can end on a good note. Sure. <laughs> so I'll do mine. Um, I'll you do chose mine. violence. Yeah, yeah. So this one is, uh, <laughs> this one is about the potential, I should say potential because we're not 100% sure, the potential banning of Binance here yep. in the Philippines. And this one's kind of a big deal to a lot of Filipinos because, you know, if you don't know, Binance does account for 50% of the world's crypto trading volume. Yep. Wow. And that certainly 
is the same here in the Philippines. Yeah. That means like half of the Filipino crypto traders are using Binance. I probably bet that more. it's more than half, but you know, I, I feel like, I mean, I'm sure you guys have Binance accounts. I have Binance, yeah. I have Binance account, even if I work in technically a competitor, yeah. right? <laughs> um, because it is easily the leader, the world leader in mm -hmm. this stuff. Yeah. So quick timeline, and then we'll just kind of talk through um, all of it, right? So November 28, 2023, so just a few months back, the SEC says that they are officially warned. So this is an actual press release that the yeah. SEC okay. issued, right? So it went to mainstream media outlets. The SEC is warning the public against using online cryptocurrency exchange Binance as it moves to have the platform blocked in the Philippines to safeguard the public from unregistered investment products. So that was November 28th. And uh, yeah, so it, as you can imagine, the crypto um, community here in the Philippines got super worried, right? Because yep. like yeah. this is I kind of that. one of our you know bedrock types yep. of mm -hmm. platforms. Um, uh, one thing, they, the one other thing they said was that the removal of access in the Philippines is expected to take effect within three months. So then November twenty eighth. So if you go forward three months, that would be February twenty nine yep. of this year, twenty twenty four. So just a few weeks back, um, and that's kind of. Where it ended in terms of like, you know, the SEC saying anything about this, mm -hmm. which is kind of odd, right? Because if if they if you expected that half of the, you know, crypto users was were on that platform, you would expect that maybe they would give you a couple more reminders yeah. that maybe, hey, mm -hmm. advisory is coming. Because like, hey, we're gonna shut yeah. you down, probably yeah. like, you know, just remind me Get every every out. month or so, right? Yeah. You know, cause like and then they but they just went silent. And that was really troubling because I'm like, you know, a lot of people started wondering, like, is it even going to happen? Was it just, mm -hmm. you know, well, was it fake news? Firstly, was it fake yeah, news? I guess right. that was the first question. And then secondly, did the SEC change their mind because we didn't, mm -hmm. you know, get any more communication? Um, what eventually did happen was on Feb 29th, on the day that we were expecting Binance to be blocked, they went out, with, they came out with a very short statement. This was from the SEC chairman, uh, Aquino. He said, I assure you it will be addressed. And that was it. That's it? <laughs> that, was, that was our statement. Typical SEC stuff, to be honest. Like, I'm not even surprised. <laughs> and so I'm like, so everyone is like scratching their heads, right? It's like, okay, so I guess it's not going to happen today. Hey, yeah. yeah. Right? So, but when? Now, a couple of days after that, March 7th, they did come up with uh, one other statement. And this was a little bo bit more definitive. Um, they said, um, the SEC is currently evaluating all possible ramifications of the blocking including implications to Philippine customer funds. We are also working with other government agencies on the procedure of restraining these unregistered entities' operations. So, okay, basically what that says to me is that, yeah, they're working on it. They have not backed down. They're still planning on banning it. Yep. But they were very careful not to say when. So in, in your mind, maybe you're thinking, well, okay, maybe, maybe we've got some time, right? Mm -hmm. But here's one really weird thing that happened the day after that. Um, there are these, there are many other unauthorized, if you're just talking about unauthorized exchanges in the Philippines, there's a lot of them. Binance yeah. is one, sure, but like, it does. you don't even have to look at the crypto world. You can look at, I mean, eToro is a e very well-known wow. stocks you... trading platform, and they are not technically authorized to, you know, operate here in the Philippines. Yeah. There's no license for it. There. So the SEC banned two of these trading platforms. One of them is called MyTrade, which you probably don't know, but you might know the other one, OctaFX. So these yeah. guys are kind of these brands that are, have been hiring Filipino KOLs to, you know, you know, um, promote their platform and stuff like that. But I've seen a lot of uh, OctaFX uh, ads as well. Yeah. yeah Even yeah, yeah, more yeah. than Binance ads. Oh, for right? sure. Yeah. For sure. Uh, so because OctaFX is a foreign exchange, a foreign exchange trading platform, yeah. which, um, you know, Facebook and Google, they don't have problems with serving ads for stuff like that. For crypto trading, they sometimes are a little bit more careful. So anyway, so both of those platforms are no longer accessible on PLDT, Globe, or Converge. And that is kind of the method that the SEC, that's really the only method that they have for blocking these websites. What they do is they go to these different telcos and they say, hey, you know, we've, we've ordered that these websites be banned here in the Philippines. Um, and then the, you know, kind of the, I guess the network engineers of those different telcos, they'll have to go and put the address in their block list, 
that's how that works. So I checked on, uh, so I'm on Converge at home uh, at the office. Of course, we're on Globe. So we checked there and it's down there. Some of my friends are on PLDT. They couldn't see either of these websites anymore. And that is troubling because those two websites were actually explicitly mentioned in the same press release as Binance back in November. So um, the exact wording was, the SEC has recently issued advisories against similar entities. They're talking about similar entities as Binance, such as OctaFX and MyTrade, as it looks to address the rising number of online entities soliciting investments from the public without the necessary licenses. So in that advisory, they were actually talking about three brand names. It was Binance, it was OctaFX, and MyTrade. And of those three, two are currently already blocked. Mm -hmm. So that it concerns me somewhat, you know, because like I do have money on Binance. I'm not, I mean, it's not a lot, but like it's enough that, you know, I don't want to lose access to it, of course. So. I mean, it's also, you know, it's pretty challenging, especially for, you know, those people, Filipinos who started crypto with, with Binance, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, learning a trading platform isn't, you know, the easiest thing. Mm, right. I mean, you could, you know, misclick, you know, a button and then all your funds are gone. And yeah. like for some people, like hmm. shifting to another exchange, you know, learning the whole process might look similar, might not, yeah. you know, and they have different, you know, they, they have different sets of, uh, you know, like rules, you know, like how, how long do you have to wait, how many, yeah. you know, confirmations are needed before your money comes in and all of that stuff. So it, it, it's, it's a bit of a complication. And I think we were talking about this, that uh, like what we're doing here in the show is that it's also news that actually it's not only here in the Philippines. Like mm. what what Binance is doing in the Philippines, it's also happening in in the States and in yeah. other countries. So it's not just, you know, it's not just here. And I think, you know, sooner than later, we might need more clarity mm. on, you know, what these boundaries are. Is it just going to be restricted to trading itself? Because if their issue is, you know, being able to trade, you know, unregistered securities or whatnot, then can we still use other features of the platform? Because there are a lot of people who are making a living off P2P, yeah, which is very <laughs> helpful for on and off ramps, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, but for you guys, uh, you know, Gcash, G Crypto, that's actually good news because now, like, we <laughs> are looking at you guys for help, you know, help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I should, I actually should have preambled this entire conversation by saying that, yeah, I totally understand. Yeah. That the uh, the thing about working for one of the local exchanges is that we we understand that we, there is some benefit yeah. for us. Be this news yeah. will kind of force the market, the local market, to kind of look at other options. Yeah. And there's sure. options like CoinsPH, there's options like us. Yeah. There's there's at least three others, right? Yep. Um, and I guess what that might do, hopefully, and I'm trying to be optimistic here. I guess what it'll do is it will create more um, competitive momentum, mm -hmm. like it'll force us to get yeah. better, yeah, right? Because yeah. like, you know, there's a certain um, level sure. of quality that, you know, the customers are used mm -hmm. to because they've been using global exchanges like, you know, Binance or OKX or Bybit mm -hmm. or whatever. And they kind of expect that level of service. So now, you know, the local players have to step up. Which is not bad in and of itself. Yeah. Um, I, at least I choose to kind of view it that way, right? Because, I mean, I do know also that there's a lot of criticism that, you know, like, oh, maybe we just leaned on the SEC mm -hmm. to eliminate one of our competitors. And I can assure you that was definitely not the case. <laughs> like, we don't have that kind of influence. Maybe it was Jared who did it. Maybe no, it was definitely Jared. Definitely was not me. <laughs> definitely. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, you know, all jokes aside, I think it's great in, in some ways that it's going to help the people get more information and get re-educated on how to adapt to this situation, yeah. which is yeah. ultimately what we're trying to do. We want people to be better informed, mm -hmm. have more of an avenue of learning how to operate all the different aspects that crypto can offer. So yeah, Binance went down. That's such a big thing. But okay, now they got to learn G Crypto. Now yeah. they got to learn maybe coins pH and yeah. other ones, which is right. ultimately going to just enhance their yeah. experience even even better. What was your first exchange? Do you remember? It was Binance. Okay. It was Binance. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> Sedona, what about you? 
Yeah, I think I think it was Binance. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I mean, see, so see? that's yeah. so, right? I mean, yeah. there, there you go. Right. I mean, yeah. Two out of the three hosts here. Mm-hmm. That was our first yeah. exchange. I mean, I, I obviously like I didn't have Binance back in 2014. So by the way, Binance is not as old as you guys think. I mean, it's actually only been around for six years. Right? Yeah. But, yeah. Wow. Tw- it was 2016, 2017. Because um, if you go to the chart of the of yeah. BTC USDT. Yeah. It's yeah. you literally start in yeah. 2016, 2017. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And like the trading pairs weren't even USDT yet. Yeah, it was yeah, back then. They were BTC, just BTC. Yeah, was everything was ago. paired wow. to BTC, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Which is yeah. pretty confusing. Yeah, it was very confusing. <laughs> if you're, yeah, yeah, I was like, what the hell? Everything yeah. is uh, gets traded into BTC no matter yeah. what, right? So it, it, it was such a. It, it's been a long road for them. Yeah. And like you've got like CZ not being able to leave the CZ? United States because yeah. he's on like some kind of house arrest or something. Yeah, I mean, crazy. Jesus, like it's been a crazy last couple yeah. of years, to be honest. I mean, uh, if, if you really think about it, right, uh, it's actually easier to use apps for for, for anything. So, I mean, mm-hmm. if we if, if maybe if we had, you know, Gcash or, or Coins PH, uh, like way back then, uh, people wouldn't really have to use Binance. I mean, we did we, we did have Coins PH. That's actually yeah, how yeah. I got my yeah. first crypto into right. into Binance. But then yeah, having to trade, like all those features weren't available yet. Correct. Yeah. But now, I mean, I, I I'm thinking about it. Like for all those new guys coming in in this next cycle, it's gonna be a lot easier for them. I hope so. I mean, I really hope so. And maybe that's part of the goal, right? Yeah. So yeah, you're motivated by the fact that now there's kind of an opportunity to address the other half of the market yeah. that yeah. Binance really just kind of dominated for so long, right? Mm-hmm. The other thing also is that we need to figure out how to get our prices to like a lower level, yeah. which is challenging um, for a number of reasons. For one thing, like Binance doesn't have to pay taxes in the Philippines, yeah, yeah, <laughs> which is true. something that every local exchange has to do, do, right? Yeah. At the very least, we have to pay VAT on every trade. And then there's also the cost of compliance and all of these regulatory requirements. All of those things add up to kind of the total cost of service that end up with the customer. And in order for that to get really low, we have to basically grow to a scale where you know you can just kind of have really really thin profits but make mm-hmm. it up just in num- in sheer number of users or transactions yeah. or something mm-hmm. like that um so anyway that, that's it that's that's the path for us so we'll see we'll see what happens uh, i think it's a developing story right i mean yeah. we don't and i guess i should probably mention that as of today when we're recording it binance is still accessible yeah. Um, and that's as far as we know for now. And we're hoping that the SEC will advise the public more publicly because like they really haven't done much, right? To just like remind everyone, hey, if you've got money in that Binance earn product, and by the way, some of those earn products have 180 day locks on them. So yeah, I can't yeah. even Oof. just pull it out, oh, yeah. right? If I wanted to, like if I if I pull it out, I forfeit all of the earnings. Yeah. Which is kind oh. of the, you know, that's a little painful. Yep. So, yeah. And all, all eyes are on uh, the SEC again, at least. I mean, even yeah. in the States and here in the Philippines, right? Because, yeah. I mean, naturally, like, they give out advisories on, like, maybe, like, uh, like MLMs or, like, Ponzi sure. and yeah. stuff like that. But now, like, they actually, like, the people need them to, yeah. you know, to be hands-on with what's yeah. developing, what's, yeah. what's developing in this space. Yeah. And it's just gonna, you know, it's just gonna get, the space is just gonna get bigger. Oh, like sure. There are going to be more people who are going to be needing their guidance. They need yeah. to be hands on, and yeah. I mean, they do support. They do support a lot of local events, right? They yeah. always, yeah, often, they always show up. Yeah, yeah, they always show up. So yeah, um, super exciting stuff uh, ahead of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exciting, scary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, lots of different adjectives. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's why we're in this space. We love excitement and drama. A and... lot of emotions involved. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We had the full spectrum of emotions yep. uh, when you're in the crypto space. You got to be very in tune with that. Um, shifting to the next, um, I, th- I guess I'll go. Yeah, yeah I guess I'll go a little bit. Um, this one's a little bit interesting because, well, for the crypto space, we all know what nodes are. Um, yeah. For the beginners out here, in layman's terms, you you operate a node on your PC, Mac, uh, VPS, or Node Runner, call it what you want, and you run it for X amount of hours, and the process is really for you to help strengthen the backbone or the infrastructure of that crypto company. And in return, you'll get the, some rewards for doing so. Now, I wanted to talk about this particular node because it, it's a little bit different from the norms of, of operating nodes. And that's the Gala Music Jukebox node. Yeah. And just like how um, Luis kind of did a timeline, like 
the the jukebox note it got released out last year and you know po- probably the biggest name that got put or signed on the platform was Snoop Dogg and the way it works is a little bit different than a note it's kind of cool like so you operate a note same standard procedure but with this node, you employ tracks on the, on the node itself. And you start with 10 tracks. And the concept is simple. The more that people listen to these tracks that's on your node, you'll earn yeah. your earn tokens or your own rewards, if you will. And that's cool. It kind of gives you the, the control of yeah. if I can pick the right songs or the songs to my liking, I can actually earn more rewards than the standard node on how they just give you a, a normal Super amount yeah. de- yeah. depending on the distribution. So I, I've been like, just for everyone's knowledge, like I have, I have a couple of nodes and I've been having a good time using it right now. And um, we did hear that there's some big polarizing figure that may be signing on. So I can't say obviously, yeah. but we, is it Taylor been, Swift? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 if it comes true, you drop the alpha, okay? Right. But I mean, I think it's great. And outside of just, you know, picking songs and you get rewards, the cool part that, that Gala Music is doing is that you can get access to the artist where you can be in a music cameo with them. You can make content yeah. alongside with them. Yeah. yeah, you get merchandise and that's cool, but I think getting to interact with them on that type of grand scope, I think that would be cool. Like I, I have a ton in- of questions. Yeah. Yeah. Um so the songs are are they NFTs? Yes. This, okay. Correct. Okay, yes. so the, they're NFTs, you load them up onto your node, is yes. that right? Yeah. And yeah. then are you basically like the str- like a streaming server for those songs? Is that yes. what That's correct. You host. Oh. So they're like Spotify okay. if you will, but just Utilizing blocks, so it's like a decentralized Spotify. Yes. I yeah, connect to Sedano it's, it's, to listen almost, to Sedano stuff. It's almost like P two P. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It live, yeah. Oh, interesting. So, am I getting? Uh, so, what am I actually doing? Like when I when I connect to like if it were Sedano's node, for example, maybe he's hosting his own music. I guess that's possible. You don't right? connect to my node. You just let's say you're gonna listen. Yeah, yeah. You just listen to the song on the app. Okay. And then if that song is on my node, okay. then me and the artist get to split uh, the rewards. Oh, right? okay. So you don't have to right. be the artist that owns the music. No. Okay. So could, so what if it was like Snoop Dogg, for example? Yeah. Is there any possibility that that would show up on Sedano's node? Like if he could, could he buy that NFT and then yes. bring it over? Yes. Is yes. That the, oh, cool. Okay. Yes. That's interesting. So uh, the, the way it works is right. Like let's say a song comes out and then there's a, num- a set number of, uh, of issues that could be, mm-hmm. that could be sold. So mm-hmm. let's say if it's a hundred mints, yep. then a hundred people could buy that NFT and then uh-huh. host it on their node. So now okay. those hundred people will be sharing the revenue from all those plays. Ah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, I mean, it's pretty cool. uh, okay. I, I love that you, you, you brought it up, Jared, because if there was one industry that I think is about to be disrupted, mm. it's going to be the music industry. Absolutely. Mm. And it happens every, you know, 10, 15 years. Mm. I started with MTV with video, then yeah, CDs yeah. and cassette, uh, cassettes, then CDs, and then, then streaming. streaming. Yeah. And, and then that really I think, blew it out of the water. Yeah. 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 And I mean, the more, I mean, the way you see it, right? The, the, more, the more artists that are still looking for a proper or like a, a way that satisfies them to distribute their music, there are going to be people trying to reinvent the wheel. Mm. And we did it with gaming, you know, mm. Web3 changed mm-hmm. gaming as we know it. And I think music is ripe for that. Mm. And yeah. I think it just, it, it just needs, you know, those, those key people mm. to start that kind of movement, right? Mm. We know a lot of guys who are going independent, like in the Philippines, um, Al James, for example, he's, he's one of the very few independent artists who aren't signed to any label, but he's also the one that's earning the most. So that says a lot, right? And now Gala uh, or like um, another project, uh, Audius, uh, like these guys like give platforms to artists where, you know, like you have control of what happens to your art and how you get incentivized by it. But even with NFTs, now it's, as you said, it's not just about the music anymore. Like you also could tie in, you know, membership, you know, fandom, Mm -hmm. souvenirs, merch experiences, and all of that stuff. So I think it's something that everyone should be watching out for, like especially those guys. How long ago did this launch? Just just last year, uh, late, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, December. 
Okay. The, the token came out in yeah, December. Just really recently. Yeah, it was very okay. recent last year. Q3, Q4, 2023. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just like as you put, I mean, it. there is a big problem in the music industry. Yeah. I mean, w- with Spotify that came, that was, it was, it changed a lot. Yeah. Uh, Snoop Dogg was saying, he was saying uh, in quote that, you know, he got a billion streams mm-hmm. and that sounds that sounds like incredible. a lot incredible. Yeah, yeah. You run the yeah. numbers yeah. for a billion streams, you get less than fifty thousand USD. Nice, <laughs> right? Wow. And, and that's. I mean, I know that's a lot for a lot of people out here, but just yeah, the it just doesn't add up. Yeah, it doesn't. Something yeah, it doesn't. is not adding up. It is even crazier. Like if you get into the numbers, you'd be like, if Snoop Dogg gets fifty k, but what does the you know what do these yeah. distributors get? What does the yeah. record label get? Yeah. Right. And but now with this, like in in Gala Music or like even in an audience. An independent artist, you know, can submit their profile, you know, if their music's mm-hmm. good enough, they'll host it for you. And then now you could sell directly to other people who are actually looking for music also on the platform who are or who are also interested in Web3 music, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah it's good it's stuff. funny that, yeah, I mean, like $50,000. Can you imagine? So that's Snoop, right? But like, yeah. if you try to look at the other end of the spectrum, like the artists that are making only, like maybe they only have 100,000 plays. Yeah. So yeah, basically, they're making nothing. Nothing. Yeah. It's hard it's to start from scratch. I, I would imagine. I can't even yeah. understand or comprehend how much they're trying to earn with all the work and energy that they're yep. putting into it. Right. Yeah. L- but, L- Louise, um, yeah, you brought up Taylor Swift earlier, yeah. right? But there's also, I mean, in my head, I call not it that like I'm a the, Swifty or anything. <laughs> yeah. but I said very defensive. I, I still, I, I still, I, I still see your uh, like your stamp from uh, from the Eras tour Jesus over the Christ. weekend. You haven't even watched it all, Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, I was wearing a really sparkly dress. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I call it in my head like the Taylor Swift dilemma, mm. right? Where uh, Sco- Scooter Braun basically mm. owned uh, mm. a lot of Taylor Swift songs. So her masters, did. masters, yeah. yes. So she had to re-record everything. So yes. like this, there's this whole you know um, behind the scenes a mumbo jumbo that goes on inside right. the music business that most normal people you know wouldn't right. really hear about. But that's exactly what you know NFT music solves. Mm. Okay, right. That's okay. That's artists. I, I, yeah. Artists okay. can build their own brands. Can build their own following. Uh, you know, like gamifying communities, mm-hmm. you know, like also having, it's like being early in a crypto project, like yeah, supporting yeah. an artist early and having that proof yeah. that you support him. Maybe you hold an NFT of this guy, yeah. right? Or maybe you, you, you've attended uh, one of his concerts and you got an NFT ticket, mm. right? Okay. So now all of this is on chain and like as an mm-hmm. artist grows and he blows up, yeah, yeah. you know, there's... There's like now, proof there's that proof, you were yeah. right. Fan. You're not just yeah, yeah. holding onto a poster that's on your yeah. wall. I mean, I I love posters. Yeah, like yeah. I think we should bring back posters. Yeah. But then again, like you also have let's say the digital accounter part of these right. like uh, yeah. these things. Yeah, and people can look at your NFT wallet. And know that you were one of those guys from yeah, the, like, like you love Taylor Swift. Swift. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know. I don't, honestly, I don't. I didn't mean for that entire conversation to be rotated yeah. around my. You open my, up that Pandora's box. Yeah. yeah. Of Taylor Swift. Hey, so let's talk numbers on this. Is that okay? Like, I kind of want to know, like, what it, what it, like, how much are we talking about to be to run a node? Okay, let's like, pull it up. Yeah. Sure. So to run a. Currently, because at you know as you buy more, as people buy more nodes, the price goes up. Currently. Oh, okay. It's around a hundred thousand pesos, around okay. two two thousand yeah. two thousand dollars to yep. to activate and run the node. And then, are you running it like what is is this like a thing where your computer is running twenty four seven? Is that how that works? Or? From my understanding, it I think it has to run about twenty, 20 hours. hours. Yeah. Twenty oh, okay. hours and minimum. I'm, and but there are different options you can go about that. You can have you can ha- you can have these node runners and they can. Okay. They can do it for you at a, like a low price, which that's what I'm doing essentially. Right. Uh, I don't want my computer on just because of you know for my preference. Sure. So they'll run it on, on theirs, and it'll, it'll cost uh, anywhere from two, two thousand, three thousand pesos for the whole year. Oh, that's easy. So okay. oh, yeah, right. That's not bad at all for something okay. like that. So you're like the you you. Do you say you own the node? You still yeah. own the yes, node. You own the node. You're just having some other people run it for you. Yep. Okay, that sounds fine. Um, what else are you? Is what other costs are there? The, uh, just that, and then the songs. Oh. So you have to pay for the songs, which yep. depending on how early you get to that song, it starts around two thousand pesos, three thousand yeah. pesos, fifty, fifty, a hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, and from there, 
Wait, that's actually like 5,000 pesos. I did my math. Today, on. Today's <laughs> price is, yeah, somewhere like 3,000 to 500. Right. Uh, 3,000 to 5,000 pesos. Right. Okay. And if the song starts booming and trending really early, the the price will go up. Yeah. Oh, so is it all existing music? What if what if you were a, a young artist that wanted to mint your own single? So, so, so right now, uh, Gala Music, it's still very curated. Yeah, okay. Uh, where they do whitelist the artists that come in, they whitelist okay. the releases. I mean, as they should. You don't want yeah. like, you know. Yeah, so it's not like Spotify so. where just anyone could just upload songs. Sure. And, mm-hmm. So the, I was just, yeah, I was telling Jared earlier, like the way I see it, at least in my head, is that it's like your own personal vinyl collection mm. where, you know, like all the stuff is curated, like you actually own the pieces of it. And if you want to listen to everything else, if you want to listen to, let's say, like all the songs in the world, you go to Spotify. Sure. But if you want, you know, if you want to play your curated playlist for your friends of also music that you own that you want to brag about, maybe mm-hmm. just open up your Gala Music uh, app and then you you put it on play. So they're nice. they're selling two different things. That's okay. what I'm trying to say. Okay, yeah, yeah no, no, that I, I get it. It's yeah. it's cool, interesting. Right? It's super interesting. Very interesting, right? Um, yeah. So we want to. So like, since we're already talking about it, right? Mm. And like Jared's introducing us to Gala Music. Um, maybe a really good resource for this specific episode is um, what's the process in like, at least for you, Luis, right? As the veteran, like what's really the process of like, what do you look for? Um, what what makes a token qualify for you to invest in, right? Oh, so man. This, That's where do you start? So, you are the vet. So okay. now let's take it step we by defer, step for yeah, everyone okay. listening let's at home, step right? So step. All right. let's say like, oh, now first, like you hear a project from Jared. Jared yeah, tells sure. you about this cool project. Mm-hmm. Now you're interested. Like you like the concept. Mm-hmm. Like you believe in the tech. It's mm-hmm. not just, you know, it's not just the hype that you're following. Yeah. Um, okay, now you go to the chart. Mm-hmm. You look at the token because you're going to need tokens to like do all of these transactions, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So what's the first thing? You go to the chart. What do you look for? Wow. Okay. Well, all right. I'm a very conservative investor. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I have become more conservative the longer I've done this. Mm-hmm. And I think it's partially because, you know, like, as you know, every day there's like uh, three new crypto tokens being introduced yeah. on average. That's three yeah. per oh, okay. day, dude. Wow. Yeah, two That's of them the are average. dog tokens. Yeah, yeah, two of them are dog tokens. <laughs> and the other one doesn't even have use case yet. Yeah. Maybe it's yeah, in sure. the next yeah. three days that you'll get a use case Here, uh, of a new let me, token. Let me share a really redonkulous statistic with you guys. So if you invested in a coin that launched in 2021, mm-hmm. just 2021, okay? So a bull market year, right? So it was a big year yeah. for crypto. Mm-hmm. This was when... Bitcoin hit 69,000 and yeah. Ethereum did all time high, whatever. So big year. If you invested in a coin that was launched in 2021, there is a 65% chance that that coin is either dead or has a coin <laughs> mar- a market cap of less than $100,000 right now. Wow. Yeah. 65%. Wow. Interesting. So basically it's a two out of three odds, right? And yeah. I mean, the, the other third probably did pretty well or could be FTX. I don't know. <laughs> so those are your, your problems. Um, I don't, so some of it honestly is free. Yeah. There's a very high chance that it's garbage. Yeah. Right? right. And if you start with that in mind, then you become by nature a lot more cautious. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Because you're like, Jesus, like the odds are really not in my favor here. Right. Mm. So what do I look for? Uh, I have a lot of patience with these things. So I, I usually don't look at the chart first. I look at the white paper first. Mm, mm. I'll give you a very specific example from kind of late last year. So um, I w- I looked at the white paper of this project called Celestia. Um, they were a modular blockchain. They, they're actually kind of one of the big winners of, oh. of last year. Um, I sat in their Telegram group for six months uh-huh. and I was just like nothing, just lurking, just yeah. looking at the conversations. And after about six months of waiting, their token launched. I bought it at $2.40. Um, it is currently $16 right now. So it's a very successful investment, right? right? Um, it actually kind of peaked at $20. Wow. And it doesn't seem like it's slowing down either. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, I guess the lesson was that I just waited. I waited mm-hmm. and I kept like I kept listening for signals, right? So was my Twitter feed starting to talk about it a little bit more? And my Twitter feed is pretty curated towards people who are a little bit more on the either the very technical side. Mm -hmm. So they're either computer scientists or they're chart technicians. Like those are the people that I really, really follow. Because if they say nice things about a project, you know, like it usually comes from, you know, some deep expertise that I don't have. So that's kind of maybe the most, 
that's the strongest indicator for me. The the people that I follow who are way more cynical about this stuff than I am, if they say a nice thing about this project, it probably means that it it basically had to hurdle all of their very, very high standards. Yep. I mean, mine are not even as high as that. Um, and that's when I kind of ape in, right? Ape yeah. in is, I mean, like it, I waited six months. It's not like I was yeah. aping in like instantly either. So I really waited. Um, and I've done a couple of those, like uh, I, I, I freaking bought, um, Jesus, what is it? Ren Render, that AI token. Oh, Actually, yeah. I think we'll probably end up talking about AI yeah, for yeah. sure one of these shows. But yeah, so that I bought that at a fairly low price too. That's like a, I think I'm a, about 3X on that right now. Nice. Um, but it's about, yeah, I needed to kind of, really understand what the hell they were selling first, right? Yep. And, and, and and have enough confidence that, you know, I can justify it to myself on a show. <laughs> like, um, well, we're not live right now, but like in public, I can actually say it on yeah. stage that, yeah, I, I put money into that, yeah. right? And yeah. I can say that I, I, did the, I did the research, mm -hmm. right? I did the homework. Um, and you can still make the wrong call, even with yeah, a ton of homework. Sure. Yeah, that's so true. Right? For sure. So I think that was kind of a, sorry, that was a long rant, but like, um, I, I, I guess I was trying to answer kind of like what the, my first step is. My first step is patience. Cause like yeah. you spend yeah. lots of time looking and like learning as much as you can. Yeah. And I mean, if anything happens, you don't have anyone else to blame, but yeah, yourself, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So the, the problem is like, sometimes you watch it on YouTube and they're like, oh, here's my list of top 10 coins yeah. that will 100X yeah. this year. And I was like, geez, the best. Bye, 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 I'm not going to lie. I fell into that, into that problem when I first got into the crypto space. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, most yeah. of us do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's oh, where man. you're normal. Yeah. That, that yeah. is exactly the experience. Because, yep. like, you don't know where to start yet. Yeah. So you look at the the these top 10 lists and yep. you're like, yeah, and you go, yeah. Right. They seem knowledgeable. Yeah. 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 This, this guy has, uh, you know, like a really cool LED background yeah. on and he knows yeah. what he's yeah, doing. Right? He knows no, actually. <laughs> he's very Guys, confident. No pun intended. We're not saying that we're those people. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, we, work some nice stuff here. we work very hard on our neon lights. And our yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We take our uh, production setup uh, very seriously, yes. as you can see, guys. But I mean, you know, like uh, this is exactly what the show is going to be about, right? Yeah. Like, you know, it's us, you know, diving deep into our own experiences, you know, what do we hear throughout the week? And then, you know, we want to talk about it. Yeah. Like, I mean, like mm -hmm. it's about sharing ideas and also sharing that information with you guys, you know, how we do stuff, what we learned, you know, from this space. And yeah, you know, it's really about, you know, having a really good discussion with our friends and everyone else who's listening at home. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess we are good for, you know, uh, to drop our uh our announcement we are going to be giving away Ooh. each of our personal nfts Ooh yeah Ooh. since ours it's our first episode so all you guys have to do is subscribe on youtube and we're going to be picking you know even if you drop a comment there this is going to be easier for us to find you but basically um all of you guys who are going to be following you are going to be getting a chance of getting personal nfts from jared me and luis we are not going to be saying what it is but do watch out because we might be announcing that every episode so it might be just the thing right yeah, if it works yeah, out yeah. Dang, like, it might be broke by the time we do, do something like it that. might be a cat <laughs> NFT, it might be a dog yeah, NFT, maybe a cats, music NFT. You know, who yeah, we'll knows? See. Yep, yep. I'm, right. I, I'm gonna go dig through the archives and look for something exotic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's it, guys. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and yeah, follow us, and we'll be seeing you in the next episode. So guys, this is GM Crypto. See All you right. guys in the metaverse. See Cheers. you guys. <laughs>